My name is Dr. Richard Horowitz, and I'd like to talk to you today about an article that Dr. Phyllis Freeman and I did called Precision Medicine, Retrospective Chart Review and Data Analysis of 200 Patients on Dapsone Combination Therapy for Chronic Lyme Disease, PTLDS, Part 1 of a Part 2 paper. The views expressed are those of Dr. Richard Horowitz and do not represent the views of the Tick-Borne Disease Working Group, HHS, or the United States. There were three primary goals for this precision medicine study. The first was to evaluate the efficacy of newer persister drug regimens like Dapsone. We collected data from an online survey of 200 of our patients which evaluated the efficacy of Dapsone, DDS, combined with other antibiotics, DDS combination therapy, and agents that disrupt biofilms for the treatment of chronic Lyme disease slash PTLDS. The second goal was to evaluate laboratory data on Lyme disease and other infections. We collected aggregate laboratory data from direct retrospective chart review. We looked at Lyme, other infections, and associated tick-borne co-infections to help determine the frequency of exposure to other infections and co-infections among a cohort of chronically ill Lyme patients. The third goal was to look at the role of infections and co-infections in chronic illness and determine how other infections and tick-borne co-infections may be contributing to the burden of chronic illness leading to resistant symptomatology. The participants were 200 adults that were recruited from a specialized Lyme disease medical practice using email and telephone contacts. Approximately a third were male and two thirds were female and the ages ranged from 18 to 84 years old. The majority of patients enrolled in the study had been ill for at least one year and had been treated by multiple healthcare providers failing traditional antibiotic therapy for Lyme disease. These included, but were not limited to, tetracyclines, macrolides, penicillins, and cephalosporins. There were two treatment arms, those patients on a tetracycline, rifampin, and dapsone, and another treatment arm where patients were also placed on a cephalosporin or a macrolide, and the choice of that treatment was based on their prior clinical response to these medications and or their co-infection status. Paired sample t-tests were performed on each of eight major Lyme symptoms with pre-DDS and DDS conditions, along with a coxin signed rank non-parametric test. Symptoms measured before and after dapsone combination therapy included fatigue, muscle and or joint pain, headache, neuropathy including tingling and or numbness or burning of the extremities, insomnia and sleep problems, forgetfulness and or brain fog, difficulty with speech and or writing, and Babesia symptoms including day sweats, night sweats, and or flushing. All 200 patients in our retrospective chart review met the criteria for a clinical diagnosis of Lyme disease supported by a physician-documented erythema migrans rash and or positive laboratory testing. Paired sample t-tests were performed on each symptom with pre-DDS and DDS conditions. P-values of less than 0.001 were found for all major Lyme symptoms. A Wilcoxon signed rank non-parametric test was run due to the small range of severity ratings. It showed a statistically significant change in severity ratings of the same eight symptoms for pre-DDS and DDS conditions. These results further confirm that patients had a significant change in all eight chronic Lyme symptoms. On this graph, you'll see the percentage of patients with erythema migrans rashes and positive Lyme testing, and you can see in our study that only 19% presented with an EM rash, 45% of the patients had IgM CDC positive Western blots, approximately 11% had CDC positive IgG Western blots, and small numbers were positive for immunofluorescent assays, ELISAs, C6 ELISAs, and Elispot. Our study showed the most common IgM and IgG Borrelia-specific bands were the 23, 31, 34, 39, and the 83-93 KDA bands for patients during their treatment in our medical facility, which occasionally span years. The number of co-infections found in our patients included between 0 and 16 co-infections. Approximately two-thirds had between five and eight co-infections, and the most frequent ones found included Babesia, Bartonella, Chlamydia pneumonia, Epstein-Barr virus, herpes virus 6, and mycoplasma species. In conclusion, many of our patients infected with Lyme disease and associated co-infections had severe symptoms, often relapsed with commonly used therapies, 
and did not present with an EM rash nor meet the CDC two-tiered surveillance criteria. Based on our study, Babesia duncani may have spread to areas not previously recognized, and persistence of Lyme disease, Babesiosis, Bartonella, Mycoplasma species, Tularemia, Brucella, and viruses, including HHV6, were all seen with evidence of immune deficiency in up to 20.7% of our patients. Dapsone combination therapy, along with several agents that disrupt biofilms, decreased the severity of eight major Lyme symptoms in our study in those with PTLDS chronic Lyme disease, along with diagnosing and adequately treating multiple species of intracellular bacteria. Dr. Phyllis Freeman and I had no conflicts of interest in this study, and we would like to thank our Hudson Valley Healing Arts Center research team for all of their assistance, and we would also like to acknowledge with thanks the Bay Area Lyme Foundation and the MSIDS Research Foundation for providing us research grants for the data mining portion of this study. I would also like to express my appreciation to my colleagues and subcommittee members on the HHS Tick-Borne Disease Working Group for their dedication and expertise in the diagnosis and treatment of tick-borne disorders. Thank you for your attention.